My life really began the night of my NDE. I felt like I was on a balcony looking down and I saw this vehicle with smoke coming out and I looked real close and that was my car. Then I stared at it and slumped over the steering wheel it was my body. I was pulled out of my body and all of a sudden I looked down and I could see my body stuck in the mud. But I'm in a body. I can feel it. No longer am I cold and freezing and stuck in the mud, but I'm warm and I'm filled with the love and a peace that I cannot explain. Next thing I knew, I was looking down at the top of my car. I was like, whoa, this is really cool. And I remember a loud roaring sound, a buzzing sound, bells going off, and this kind of a shh thinking in within to myself. I was wishing I could communicate to the medical team that this is okay, you do not need to save this girl. I was happy, I was in peace, I was in knowingness. I lifted up out of my body and I felt, I just felt all the pain went away and I was in this other ethereal body that was uh, perfect that didn't have a fractured, didn't have the damaged face, the fractured skull. And I separated from my body. I was up above the scene, and I could hear the nurse say, she does not have a pulse, she does not have a pressure. At that moment, I found myself at the top of the hospital room. And I was floating there, and I remember my face was upward. And I also remember consciously thinking, the body is back there. I kept referring to it as the body is down there, down there. But I also knew I did not want to look at my body. I didn't want to acknowledge it, and I certainly didn't want to get back in it because it was extremely painful. So at that point, I began to float upwards, and I began floating over what they call negative treetops. I call negative treetops. When you take a photograph and you have a negative, it's got that kind of different different uh, look about it, like a negative. I started floating over these treetops, and there were other entities or beings and people, a couple that I recognized, one is my grandmother, waving to me like, hi, come on in. And it was just, it was like I was floating above and looking down, and it was so beautiful. And I looked over to the right, and I saw all these relatives of mine who had died before, and they were waving and smiling, and I smiled and waved, and but I didn't feel like I was supposed to go over and talk to them because that's sort of not why I was there. In an instant, I was sucked away like a piece of dust in a vacuum hose and I was cascading through a dark tunnel. I suddenly lost interest in what was going on down there because I saw this white light over here. I experienced being in a dark tunnel. The tunnel felt familiar, it felt comfortable, it was dark, as they say, often in these stories. It was this feeling that was coming through this tunnel of love. At that point, I just kept floating, and, and I saw this big tunnel. I had a very atypical experience. Big tunnel with a light at the end of the tunnel. And there before me was this being of light, which had previously appeared as just a little white dot at the end of this tunnel. I said, whoa, there's the white light, I'm going. And so I just floated toward, through the tunnel, I entered the tunnel and I floated toward this light. This amazing, beautiful, peaceful, loving, all-encompassing and unconditional light. I, you really can't express it in human words because it completely limits the experience and there are no human words to express it. I say it's more of an emotion. And there was this tunnel it seemed very dark, but there was this great light at the end. No matter what happens to you, and um, you see the light, you, you look for that light and go with that, and everything will be fine. And I just sort of thought, I want to go through that. And the next thing, I was through it. And when I came out of the tunnel, I was surrounded by the most beautiful flowers glorious, colorful flowers like you don't see on earth, hues and colors that I can't even really explain to myself now and cannot really explain to you, but they were gorgeous. And I was in this place, but it wasn't a place like here. It was 
an environment, an atmosphere, and it was love. I kept thinking, oh, I'm home, I'm home. That's all I kept thinking. Total, everything is fine and always will be and always has been. It felt like home. Impossible to describe, but so wonderful, I can't stop trying to find words for it. It was amazing. It was total bliss, total joy, total love, total acceptance. It's sort of like when you're being born. Um, as an infant, you come out and all of a sudden you're inundated with lights and sound and cold and wet, and it's just you're just inundated. All your senses are just overwhelmed. I felt like that's where I belonged, and that's the way it's supposed to feel all the time. But, of course, that's not the way it feels here. Quietly, steadily, a white light got closer and closer. The light was so bright that it was brighter than 10,000 suns. And I immediately said, this should be burning my retinas. But it wasn't. It was a gentle but powerful light. It was pulling me. It was pulling me like a gentle magnet. And I was being just sucked in into that light. I was in a loving presence in white light that just filled me with a sense of peace. And then there was another dimension that I saw and the light was there. Uh, a little angel came to me. It was my little brother. He told me it was my brother. He told me that he had died. But there was an angel on the ceiling of this room where I was staying. And this angel was very beautiful and had this glow from within, like a lantern. And he was in these flowing white robes. And I somehow knew him. And he took my hand, such as it was, and we went flying out through the window. And I had no fear. It was like I'd been flying through windows all my life. In that white light, every question I ever had, any idea about what was what or how things worked, was answered immediately. In that moment, you have an awakening. In that moment, you often remember who you are. You remember so many things, and you have access to divine knowledge, and you have access to all the mysteries of the universe. And the closer I got, the more I was filled with an ecstasy, with a love, with an unconditional love of me as Andy. And as I got closer to the light, all of a sudden, I popped into a giant sphere. It was, it was about the size of a, of a basketball coliseum. And I was suspended in the middle of this sphere. This being um, was all things that ever were, are, or will be. And this being came up to me, genderless, very, very powerful, loving being, who just took me in its arms and held me, loving me for just exactly who I am, my quirks, my virtues, my strengths, my weaknesses, everything about me. You see who you are completely, you see your flaws, you see your gifts, and you judge yourself because you, everything is reflected back to you. And all around me, at all parts of the sphere, up, down, sideways, left, right, all over, were, were miniature motion pictures of my lives and what was going on. And I could see, I could touch, I could feel, I could sense every emotion that was taking place in all of those lifetimes. And I started seeing my life pass by, my infancy, my childhood, and I, I felt good about it. I'm watching myself, oh, I remember that. And I'm sorry, that was bad. God's response was just more than I could understand at the moment. He said it was neither good nor bad in the grander sense. It was a lesson for your learning. I could recall not only what it felt like, but how I was thinking. And when I would concentrate on one, I would immediately be there. I would be reliving what I had lived, and I would remember the reliving. And then I would think about another area, and then I'd pop into another movie. And I would do this for some period of time, but... It was pictures from my past. And it wasn't just a photograph, it was 
a 3D image. And the light was viewing me. The light knew everything that I ever thought, did, or will do. It knew everything. And the light welcomed me. And the light said, Andy, don't be afraid. And I was impressed. I mean, the light knew me and called me by my name, called me Andy. Oh, that was pretty good. And then the light said, Andy, I love you. And then the light said, Andy, we love you. And recalling exactly how others were feeling because of the way I was behaving. The light has, has a fantastic sense of humor. We would view some of the really silly things that I did in my lifetime and we'd, and we'd, we'd be laughing at how serious I took them. Because life down here is an illusion. It's a game. Don't take it so serious. That total acceptance, that total... I wouldn't have to change anything about me or be anything else because I was loved for exactly who I was. God waved to me with his right hand and with his left hand was patting his left knee saying, come on. I, I kind of melted in its lap and merged with it. And the next thing I knew, I was standing in the, in the middle of a circle of these 12 foot beings of light. This being was um, also contained perfect knowledge, how everything works, perfect justice, and compassion. They were pretty intimidating, but not really, because they felt they felt more like family than the people I had seen. And, and this being, I'll just say he, because we usually use the male pronoun, but this was not, you know, a, a male figure, unlike the angel was just loving me, just sending this perfect, unconditional love, to knowing that everything about me and just loving me just the same. And in an instant, I was in his lap with his arms around me, gazing up into his face as he was looking down into my eyes. I got into this telepathic discussion with a being of light, and um, all of your thoughts go out um, instantly, telepathically, and the answers come back perfectly clearly, more perfect than we can express things in words, because the whole, the, the entire picture is presented in, in, with all of its ramifications. All the judgments, all the anxiety of this world just melted off of me like butter on a hot counter. And as the light said to me, Andy, we love you, in back of the light were billions and billions and billions of other lights. And all of them knew me. And they all said in a giant chorus, Welcome home, Andy. And I said out loud, I'm home. At last I'm home. And by its side was a kind of male being who was like a protector. And that protector was saying, You're completely safe. I was safe. I was home. This being of light took me on a tour of the universe just at the speed of thought. Einstein's law did not apply there. Um, it was just possible to travel from one celestial object to another. Stars coming into being, stars dying out. Uh, all, of the, all of the beautiful objects, galaxies, comets, planets, all of these things I just saw them as this beautiful, radiant, alive, and so magnificent. Uh, there was no darkness. Nowhere that I looked was there any darkness, like the way we see space. Um, everything was filled with its own internal light. And pretty soon I found myself out in the universe. It was full of stars and galaxies, and it was just the most glorious, gorgeous thing that you can possibly imagine. And you know what? It seemed familiar. And then we went to this one star that seemed to be at the center of all things. And we went into the center of this star where there was fire all around. But of course I wasn't afraid because I was completely loved and protected. And I wasn't in a body. I, I was um, sort of in the hands of God. And so we went through the center of the star 
And at that point, we went into another dimension where there were no more objects at all. There was no more light. There was just the fullness of the presence of the, of the potential of all the worlds that ever will be created. And it was like going back into what is called the night of Brahman, the time of being before the creation. And here, I just melted into the most perfect, unconditional love, uh, in a bliss that is beyond words, beyond anything we could ever experience here. And the light welcomed me. The light absorbed me into the light. So I was part of the light. And once I was in the light, I knew everything the light knew. I knew all about the universe. I knew everything about flowers, about plants, about asteroids, about suns, about novas, everything. I didn't have a question for the light. Why? Because I know all the answers. I had this being appear for me, before me, and his name was Melchizedek. And I knew that. And when you're in this heavenly space, you know things by thought processes. You know what each other is thinking. And it was simple and natural and wonderful. And he was beautiful. He had big blue eyes. He had a beard, a gray beard. He had like a turban around his head. He was dressed in gold and velvet and green. And he was gorgeous. And I felt like I knew him forever. The life has a wonderful sense of humor. And we're laughing and we're talking and we're just having a great time. And then the light says to me, Andy, you have to go back. Now, I, I'm not going back. I said to the light, I don't think so. I'm home. I'm staying. I heard a voice say to me, not now, my daughter. It looked at me and said, now it's time to go. And I remember saying, I'm not going back there because it's nasty. People are mean, and it's like walking through hip deep molasses, just trying to get anywhere or do anything. And people are nasty to each other, and it's just bad. And I'm not going back. I looked into his eyes, and I said, Well, there's no way I want to leave. They weren't really arguing. I was just sort of standing there going like this, and they were sort of going, Yes, dear, it's all right, dear. You're doing fine. You can do whatever you want. I did respond with, I'm not going back. And I really wanted to stay because it was really good there. And then the light said to me for the second time, Andy, you're going back. And I said, no, you don't understand. I don't want to go back into that body. I don't want to go back on Earth. I'm home here in the light. And then the light said for the third time, Andy, you're going back. And as soon as I heard the K from the back, I was pushed back into my body, filled with pain and anxiety. And during all of that process, I was, they were, I was now on the beach, and they were, my friends were pushing the water out of my lungs, and I was coughing the water out, and I was completely conscious. I came to in the hospital bed in Atlanta, Georgia, two weeks later. But then I found myself suddenly in the hospital with three doctors hanging over me. And the next thing I knew, I woke up in the, in the emergency room at the hospital and said, oh my God, what happened? And the nurse said, you were in a car accident. And I said, that's not what I mean, because <laughs> I wasn't supposed to come back. And I was crying. And all of my classmates thought I was crying from the pain of drowning. But I was crying because I was no longer in the light. I was back in my body. I was back on Earth. I wanted to be in the light. And it just seemed to go on for this timeless period. Time was no longer relevant. I felt myself being whooshed backwards, almost like being sucked backwards back through the light, back into the tunnel, really, really quickly, this happened very quickly, back out over the negative treetops, 
and um, just floating back as fast as I could go. At that point, then I, I remember the sensation of being back in my body with a thud, and I remember the sensation of my body being uh, cold and very confining and almost like, you know, bound, like I was bound. It's like driving a car and you feel like, you know, the tires are sticking on the road. That's exactly what I feel. And boy, did it feel different. I mean, three dimensions, when there's not a lot of love, is a real difference from where I was. And the last thing I heard uh, from one of the, uh, the nurses was, I can't believe that kid on this guy. And I remember thinking as I closed my eyes, you have no idea what just happened to me. I never wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to commit suicide. I wanted to, I was always dreaming about going back to the other side because I knew how beautiful it was, how loving it was, and that's where I wanted to go. But I also know that I have a purpose and there is a reason why I'm here. It still felt like here I am in the world and people are still mean to each other and it's not that love energy that was there that felt like the heart of God. It felt like going back and standing in the middle of the heart of God. Even though you believe someone is dead, that they can still hear you, they still know what's written on your heart, and that's important to remember. And in that moment, I remembered that my soul chose to come to Earth. I remembered where I was before I was born. I remember that all of our souls choose to come here, that this is a wonderful university, that we're not here by random accident, we're not here as victims, that we come here to choose, to study, to learn, and to grow. It was like I was in this cosmic ocean, and I was a drop in this ocean. We not only get to look at what we've done, we get to feel what we felt, and we get to feel how our behavior affected others. What I remember is not the answers. I don't know of anyone who's brought back all of the answers. I don't think we're allowed to. But I remember that I knew this and I said, oh, yes, of course. I already knew that. How could I have ever forgotten? And here are some of the things I've learned from this. Your priorities change because you realize that the most important thing is love. The only thing is love. That's really the only thing there is. Except sometimes it's expressed as fear, the opposite side of it. And all that petty stuff doesn't matter. It's like you tap into the universal database that any information greater than the internet was right there for me to know simply by looking. We all know that we came back with a mission. Most of us don't know what it was at the time, but we know we had one. And you spend a lot of time trying to figure out what that was. I get to recall and relive every experience, even when I teased that girl in junior high because she talked with a lisp and she was big and fat. And I not only recalled what I said, I get to feel what she felt like because of the way I behaved. And I felt so bad and ashamed. God's response was again, neither good nor bad. It's a lesson for the learning. I lost the perfect knowledge as we all do, but I know that life continues, that we are loved. And I also had the gift of seeing this love and light all around in everything and everyone. And I believe that is what is really true. There's a divine plan for Earth. There's a reason for being here. Now I think my mission and everybody's mission is to be here in three dimensions in this time and this space and to hold the energy of the light of God. Just hold it. We don't have to do anything. Just hold that energy. And as we hold it, we help other people around us find that energy and feel that energy. You are always here if you would only know it. Every one of us is always connected to and one with our source. 
if we can get beyond our mind. Humanity is changing. Humanity is evolving. And this is the time. And all you have to remember is there is nothing out there to fear. You are a divine, powerful being. We all are. We're all part of God. We're all part of love. That's who we are. We are the heart of God. And we're here to bring that to planet Earth to create heaven on earth. And we can do it in love. That's why we're here. We've just had an opportunity to connect with our source and learn that this life that we live is an opportunity that is in giving to others that we receive and become more valuable. Not what we get and have, but what we give. Being in the light was being in unconditional love. Unconditional love means unconditional forgiveness. Unconditional forgiveness causes you to smile forever. That's the story, folks.